Rose Ross, do you believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. And do you believe that God loves you so very much? Yes. And he wants to be a part of your life for the rest of your life? Yes. You've already spent testimony in that. So, Mackenzie Ross, I'm going to hold this over your nose. Just lean you back forward. I baptize you in the name of Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes. It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing and reading thoughts Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh, oh my soul And our theme verse for this series is John 10:10, 10, 10, where Jesus said, I have come to give them life and to give it more abundantly. And we're looking at certain character traits that we'll be experiencing if we have this abundant life in our life. And so today's character trait is joy. If there's ever a country on this earth where people should be filled with joy, one would at least think that would be the United States of America. But most current, current polls show us that only 35% of Americans are happy. Depression affects more than 19% of American adults. Anxiety disorders over 40 million or 18% of the population. In 2019, a federal data analysis 
found that the suicide rates in America had surged to their highest level in 30 years, rising in that period by 64% among women and 43% among men. A worldwide study of some 90,000 people showed that the 10 richest countries in the world also had the highest rates of depression, and the United States had the second highest rate, succeeded by only France, and which tells us that joy and happiness may not be necessarily dependent upon your circumstances. And those who have the most reason to be joyful often turn out to be the most depressed. So let me begin this discussion about joy with two profound statements in the Bible. These may surprise you. And one of the first things to understand about joy in the scriptures is that our God experiences joy. Isaiah 62, five says, as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The Bible actually teaches that God enjoys us. Our God looks down on humanity and he, I think he enjoys some of us more than others, but he enjoys us. Isaiah 65, 19 says, I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And Zephaniah 3, 17 says, the Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. And I don't know if you've ever thought about that before, but God in heaven is a joyful person and he rejoices in us. He actually likes us. If you've ever been brought up in a culture where so many have that God is viewed as a God of judgment, someone who's stern and angry all the time, listen to the word of God because God experiences joy. And right on the heels of that, we need to understand that God wants us to experience joy. He's a joyful God and he wants his creatures to be joyful. For those who believe in the Bible, there's no debate about this and there's no doubt about this. What God desires for us, he provides for us. So listen to the words from Jesus in John 15, 11. Jesus said, I have told you this, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Later in John 17, 13, he said, I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. See, Almighty God wants his joy to be our joy. He wants the experience of joy that he has in heaven to be our experience of joy while we're here on this earth. And the Bible describes that this as his own joy. The Bible tell, not only tells us that God wants us to be joyful, but see if you can figure this one out. He commands us to be joyful. Because here's what it says in Philippians 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And in case we didn't get it right the first time, he says, and again, I say rejoice. And maybe you're thinking, well, I don't know. You just can't walk up to somebody and say, start being joyful. You just can't come in and joy. But we have to ask the question, why not? We're supposed to be in charge of our own attitudes. And when we read in the New Testament, we discover that the ministry of Jesus in his life, lifetime, he was always surrounded with joy. Jesus was a joyful person and wherever he went, he brought joy. And actually when he was born, that was the promise, wasn't it? That he would bring joy. I mean, we have this word that we sing in our Christmas season, joy to the world, the Lord has come. In fact, I remember one of the very first books of the Bible that I taught as a young pastor was the Gospel of John. And you don't even have to get out of the second chapter of the Gospel of John before you see Jesus performing his first miracle. And what was that? It was the miracle of turning water into wine at the wedding. And that miracle became one of the sign miracles in the book of John so that those who saw the miracle would believe that he was indeed the Son of God. But if we go back to that chapter in the book of John, second chapter, and we read the story about the wedding, we see that Jesus was involved in the celebration of this young couple, making their vows to one another. And he enjoyed being around people where joy was happening. And what I've discovered is that joy is the atmosphere in which our Christian lives are supposed to be lived. 
when Paul was writing to the believers in Thessalonica, he settled it once for all. He said, rejoice always, always. And did you know that joy can be very, very present in every major event that we've ever experienced as believers? If I was to ask you this question, how many of you remember the day that you were saved? I mean, if I was to see a show of hands, was that a happy day? I mean, we sing that in the chorus, oh, happy day, happy day you washed my sin away. See, the joy of salvation is the joy of realizing that you're not guilty anymore, that you've been forgiven, and that God has given you the gift of eternal life. And we're going to spend eternity with him. What a joyful thought. Salvation is a joyous time. And in fact, the Bible says when a person is saved, Almighty God throws a party in heaven. In Luke chapter 15 and verse 10, we're told that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So every time you hear somebody give a testimony of their salvation about when a person comes to Christ, we should rejoice in that because it's a moment of great joy that even brings joy to heaven. That's where it all starts. And you know, the Bible then tells us that this Christian joy is so unique, it even shows up in times of difficulty. One of my favorite Bible stories is the story of Paul and Silas, recorded in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts. And these guys are put in prison. And before they were put in prison, they were put in, taken to the stocks and they were beaten. And now they're here in this prison cell and Acts 16.25 tells us at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Now that's the kind of joy that can get you happy in a jail at midnight with your back bleeding and your life in danger. That's the kind of joy that I want. We may not be able to rejoice in our load, but as we learn, we can rejoice in our Lord. Christian joy is so incredible that it stays with us even when we're dying. See, I've been with Christian people through the process of death, and I see the, the smile on their faces. Some of them have told me that they've experienced the joy of the Lord Jesus in the process, and they were ready to go meet him in the air. See, when Paul was getting ready to finish his journey, he said in Acts chapter 20, none of these things moved me. All the things that were going on around him, and he says, they didn't bother him. These things didn't move me, he says, and they don't get in my way. I don't even count my life dear to myself so that I can finish my race with joy. Paul had joy all the way to the end. So let's talk for a moment about our source of joy. Where is the source of joy come from in our lives? We've already established that this joy comes from Jesus. Listen again to the words of John 15, 11, where he said, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you. I mean, say that with me, my joy. And then he says that my joy that is gonna be in you is gonna be complete. Jesus says, I want your joy to be the result of my joy. This is joy that comes from Christ. It's Christ's joy. It's the joy of life in the Lord Jesus Christ being lived out inside of each and every one of us. Christian joy is Christ's joy. Christian joy is letting Christ live his life through us so that we become joyful. In 1 Peter 1.8, Peter calls it a joy unexpressible and full of glory. See, joy isn't dependent on us, it's dependent on him. And if we'll trust him with our lives, he produces that joy in our hearts. And the characteristic of this joy is also that it was a full joy. It's not an imperfect or incomplete joy. It's not an almost joy or a sometimes joy. This is an everyday 100% complete joy. And the uniqueness of this joy is captured in the words of Peter who wrote in the first chapter of his first letter. See if you can get your arms and your thoughts around this one. Because here's what Peter said. He said, in all this, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith is of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, 
glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Let me pause for a moment and say that if you're looking for joy outside of Jesus, we're wasting our time. But I'm here to tell you he is always open for business. He's always ready for you to come. And if you want real joy, if you want real quality joy, 100% wonderful joy, you've got to let Jesus come into your heart. And if you've done that, I hope you'll do that because for the rest of this time, it's not gonna work unless you have Jesus in your heart because that's where it starts. The Bible tells us that this is Jesus's joy. It's my joy, he says. And it's a full joy. And it's also a continual joy. Friends, have you ever discovered how simple it is for the gladness of today to become the sadness of tomorrow? Have you ever noticed how your sweetness of the morning can turn into bitterness at night? Or the friends you thought that your friends yesterday become your enemies today? Or the wisdom you thought that was so cool yesterday now is foolish? One thing that all of us share as we take this journey together with humanity is that nothing we ever get involved in ever seems to last. But the joy of Christ, this joy we're speaking about today is continuous. It's never ending. It's absolutely constant, lasting joy. The joy is not hinged on happiness. It's not hinged on happiness. It's perfected in a person. And one of the lowest times in the lives of Jesus' disciples and the days just before he was taken away from them going to the cross, in the midst of their sorrow and anxiety, Jesus comforted his disciples with these words. John 16, 22. He says, therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice. And this is the part I love and your joy no one will take from you. So how do we get this joy? We've already talked about the fact that we have to surrender our life to Christ. We have to give our life to Jesus in the first place. And I wanna say, if you don't know Jesus, that's where the joy starts. Of the things you need to do, you have to have joy in your life. You also have to submit to the totality, to the Spirit of God. You see, joy is a fruit of the Spirit. And when we're filled with the Spirit of God, we get the fruit. And we're talking about how to cultivate that fruit. But if you don't get it, you don't have it. And you have to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Spirit of God comes to live within your heart. And if you want that joy to be full and complete, you have to say to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the Holy Spirit, here's my life. Do with it as you please. Years ago, when I first understood the importance of fully dedicating your life to the Lord, I didn't want to do it. Because for some reason, I thought in my mind that God was going to send me out to Africa or something. For some reason, I thought if I said, Lord Jesus, you can have my whole life, I thought I'd end up on a mission field somewhere real far away. And you know, now that I look back, I think about that, that that would have been all that bad because a lot of good things are happening out there on the missions field. But you see, until we come to the place where it's not us anymore, it's Him, and we're willing to say, Lord Jesus, here is my life. You chart it. I'll sign the line at the bottom. And I faced that early in my Christian life when I volunteered to help the pastor at that time with a teen class at Vacation Bible School. And he chose me because he wanted to camp out down by the river one evening, and he knew I played the guitar. And one week before that BBS started, that pastor resigned. And everyone looked at me and said, well, you were going to be, you were going to help the pastor teach that class. You teach the class. So I had never th- taught anything in my life, and I really didn't even like teenagers at the time. But you know, when I signed at the bottom of the line, it said, God, Here's my life. You do with it what you want. And God gave me a heart and love for teens. And 28 years later, I resigned as youth pastor. And two years after that, I was hired on here as your senior pastor. All because the Bible says 
Commit your ways to the Lord, and He gives you the desires of your heart. But it doesn't start until you say yes. Until you say, yes, Lord God, I want your joy. I'm not going to get it my way, so here I am. Here's the page of my life. I've signed at the bottom. Now you fill in the details. Thirdly, how do we get this joy in our life? We have to study the Word of God. You know why? Because God's book is his handbook on joy. It's the book that God gave us so that we could know how to live this Christian life. And if we want to know more about joy, this book is it. We find joy in this book everywhere. And let me just tell you that if you want to really cultivate joy in your life, the next thing we have to know is we have to share it with others. We're not going to be happy by ourselves. God never intended you to be happy by yourself. That's why he created the church, so that we could be together. How many of you know how hard it would be to live a Christian life today if we didn't have each other, if we didn't have the church? Look at all the scary mess that our country's in right now. Look at all the craziness that's going on. And you know, the only kind of sanity that we feel every so often is when we come to church on Sunday and gather together and worship and give God praise. Then we get to go back into the mixed up world and we've got other people in our lives for support and care and concern. You know, a Christian life is a joyful one. And one of the greatest things people tell me when they visit our church is they say, Pastor, there's so much joy in your church. Isn't that what it should be? If we've got Jesus, we should be full of joy. Joy is contagious. And we should be catching the infection. We have to expose ourselves to the virus and become a part of this blessed epidemic to be joyful. So if you want to be a joyful learning Christian, I've been learning this the hard way. And you know, I, and I know some of you know this already. If you want to be joyful, you got to hang out with joyful people. How do we know what kind of people to hang out with? Find the people that are joyful. And because person who has authentic joy in your life, that's the kind of people you need to hang out with. You've just solved your problem. You've got the right person, find joyful people, hang out with them, and be part, become part of this epidemic. Catch the virus, so to speak. Get infected with joy. And let us go back to that old lyric in the old song we used to sing when we were younger that said, if you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. Because I've got that joy, joy, joy. Where? Down in my heart. If you want real joy, you've got to have Jesus. Lots of room and I never would have seen it if I wasn't rolling with you